The greatest threat to our freedom today comes from within. It is the government's destruction of our families and our children. But the government's war against the family strikes at the social basis of all civilization. The divorce regime is not only a threat to social order, but also to civic freedom. What is happening today is much more serious than simply unfairness or gender bias against fathers in divorce cases. It is the government's machine for destroying the main rival and check on its power, which is the family. The most basic human rights and constitutional protections are routinely destroyed and violated in America's family courts. The lives of parents and children are in serious danger, as we learned from Wilbur Street, once they are, as the phrase is, taken into custody. Today in America, American citizens who are legally unimpeachable, who are under no suspicion of wrongdoing, who are sitting in their own homes minding their own business, can be forcibly summoned to legal proceedings and find themselves stripped of their children and subject to criminal proceedings. Americans today are subject to criminal proceedings not for public crimes, but for how they conduct their private lives. Without any action on their part, American citizens are being turned into criminals in ways they are powerless to avoid. Without demonstrating you have committed any legal transgression, government officials can now enter your home, examine your private papers and effects, empty your bank account, throw you out of your home, jail you without trial, and most serious of all, take away your children. The police state methods used by the divorce industry are not a future possibility. They are the present reality. I want to give you a short list of the, of, the, of the practices that are routine in what used to consider itself the freest society on earth. Mass incarcerations without trial or charge. Forced confessions. Children forcibly separated from parents who have done nothing wrong. And parents stripped of their children without explanation. Government agents entering the homes and examining the private papers of innocent parents. Official court records, including hearing tapes and transcripts, are doctored and falsified with the knowledge of court officials, and evidence is fabricated against the innocent. Defendants are denied the constitutional right to face their accusers. Bureaucratic police are authorized to issue arrest warrants and subpoenas against parents with no hearing. Special courts are created specifically to process parents for political offenses. Forced labor facilities are being created specifically for parents. Children are instructed to hate their parents with the backing of government officials. Children are forced to act as informers against their parents with the backing of government officials. Children are abused and killed with the support of government officials. Knowingly false allegations. I could go on and on about this. We heard the story of Wilbur Street. Parents are often jailed without trial, and in one case, at least one case, fatally beaten, in the case of Brian Armstrong, and then others are denied medical attention when they are in police custody. Parents are ordered by government officials to separate from their spouses on pain of losing their children. Parents are ordered to pay the private fees of officials they have not hired, whose services they have not sought or used on pain of incarceration. And I could go on and on. Crooked and rapacious courts are nothing new in America, in, even in free societies. They usually begin as irregular courts, courts that demand some kind of, to bypass the established protections. And that's what family courts are. They call themselves courts of equity or courts of chancery, much like the rapacious 19th century court that Charles Dickens exposed in his book, Bleak House. But I think something more than simply crooked courts is at work here. What's happening in the divorce ex regime is driven by an extremist ideology and by a bureaucratic expansion which is reminiscent of the ideological and bureaucratic dictatorships of the last century. In those regimes, what began as an ideological drive for equality or freedom or socialism or some other high-minded ideal, inevitably and eventually degenerates into what is little more than a system of what we in political science call a kleptocracy, a government by thieves. The Communist Party in the Soviet Union is an excellent example of that. Today's divorce industry also advertises itself with high-minded ideals. The welfare of children, the equality of women, the need to punish evildoers. Yet likewise, it is no exaggeration to say that the family law system of this country is degenerated to the point where it is little more and nothing less than a system of organized crime. Yeah. Yeah. We have reached the stage where the lawbreakers sit on the bench 
and pass sentence against law-abiding citizens. Throughout this country, in virtually every jurisdiction, American citizens have been subject to what is nothing less than a quiet reign of terror. A terror that uses children as weapons against their parents. This terror is administered, as it was in the French Revolution, under Nazism and Communism, by irregular courts, specialized courts, and by a bureaucratic apparatus. But never before in human history has any government created a machinery whose primary purpose is to take children away from their parents. The Nazis did it, the Communists did it, but it wasn't their main purpose. Today in this country we have created a multi-billion dollar machine that serves no other purpose than to take away our children. What would you do if someone came up to you in your home or on the street and took away your children? What would you be expected to do? What is the predictable response of any parent if someone interferes with their children? Would you stand there jabbering about how you were a good parent? Would you start amassing evidence to show that you had been an involved parent and therefore your children shouldn't be taken away? Or would you fight for your children? Would you use any means at your disposal to recover your children and protect them? Yet this is precisely what we expect American parents to do. To sit there in silence as their children are taken away. No parent is going to do that. No parent should do it. And to expect parents to sit there and acquiesce in the stealing of their children is to seriously pervert our criminal justice system and our entire government. Who is, um, who is addressing this? Who is standing, who is resisting this? Politicians are not doing so, obviously. They're the ones that are perpetrating it. Although I must say it's very gratifying to hear politicians here today beginning to do so. Journalists studiously avoid it. Human rights groups and civil libertarians look the other way. The few attorneys who speak out are suspended or disbarred. Even groups that claim to be pro-family organizations seem to avoid it, seem to look the other way. We are the only ones that are defending the family. And it's not because we are especially virtuous or, or moral, it's because they are our children. And I think there's an important principle in that that we need to learn. There are two, in America today, there are two main checks on the power of the government. One is the Constitution, the other is, as G.K. Chesterton pointed out, the family. Both of them are under threat and for the same reasons. Because they limit the power of the government, we cannot trust the government to protect them. We do not entrust the government to protect the, the Constitution. Citizens, by definition, must protect the Constitution, ultimately. Likewise, we cannot trust politicians and government officials to protect the family. Parents alone must protect their children. Contrary to the government propaganda, the only people who can protect and defend their children are their parents. And I therefore believe that today in America, the only people that can defend our freedom are also the parents of America. In response to a foreign threat, we send young men abroad to fight, to risk their lives, and if necessary, to die for our freedom. And when they come home, what do they find? That their children have been taken away. And they're summoned to court as if they were criminals. They're treated as if they abandoned their children because they were off on foreign soil fighting for the defense of those children and for ours. They fight and they die for our freedom, just as the men of the American Revolution and the Civil War died for our freedom. If a man hasn't discovered something he's willing to die for, said Dr. Martin Luther King, he isn't fit to live. Dr. King, of course, practiced that. Practiced that. The great Czech philosopher Jan Kotchka, who died under interrogation in a communist prison, said that the life not willing to sacrifice itself to that which makes life meaningful is not a life worth living. Our forefathers made that sacrifice, and we have seen men and women in our own times making that sacrifice. Wilbur Street sacrificed his life for his children. John Murtari sits in a jail cell today and may sacrifice his. Brian Armstrong went to jail and lost his life. Darren White, Charles London, Stephen Cook, Lou Barber. I could sit here all day and recite the names of parents and children whose lives have been sacrificed on the altar of the almighty divorce industry. The fate of these parents and children shows us why parents and other Americans today live in terror of the government. 
Parents live in fear of officials to whom we are supposed to look for justice. Parents live in fear of judges, lawyers, police, therapists, social workers. I think the children of America will be safe when government officials live in fear of parents. Amen. The children of America are in great danger today, but they will not be protected by government officials or government programs. Judges and lawyers cannot protect our children. Social workers and therapists cannot protect our children. The children of America will not be made safe or secured by arresting their fathers. The children of America will be safe only when every father in America stands up and says to the world and to the government, you touch my children and you will answer to me. God bless you.